How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 11, and we have a game here against South Alabama. Um, but before we get into that, obviously our recruiting, look at ESPN, and then I have a question for you. How does my mic sound here? Do you guys like this more or less? I've made some changes. I think it's personally a lot better than it was previously. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it. And it's now time to do some recruiting. Uh, 600 points available to us. Let's do let's do this first. We got we got three guys ready to visit Gamar Kelly. Um, I don't like that competitive visit. We'll send him to the Arkansas State game. Stevie Holmes will go also to the Arkansas State game, and Jarvis Williams is gonna end up there as well. So, all three going to the same game near the end of the season. Five guys without scholarship offers. Uh, let's look. We might offer these if these players are good enough and yeah we'll spend the points this week to to give all these players the uh points that extra 50 could be useful and that way we don't have to worry about offering scholarships and using those points in the future 26 players with visits scheduled and as we go here we can see in the lead with a ton of players maybe could pull some points away from a few of them but again we'll head to the bottom of the board adam johnson we have been slowly crawling back against uh, Louisville here. We're going to bump him up that last 150 to the 500. And then we'll just hope that all of these guys so far are looking good. Stevie Holmes will give him a little bit. It leaves us with 50 points. Is that going to be good enough? Um, Kyle Walker needs those 50 points. So it seems like this has worked pretty well. However, Eric Oliver, we are... In trouble, Wake Forest gaining there quite a bit. We're going to need to find points to give him. And NIU trying to gain on Joel Hall. So this isn't necessarily uh, done yet, but we will kind of go up through here and take points where we can find them. All right, so we've gone ahead and found a bunch of points that we can give to these players. Another 600 I pulled out from players kind of higher up on the board. And so we're going to max both of them out at 500 and that'll be just enough for us so easy recruiting in this week and we can go ahead and take a look now at espn to see what we're looking at i think that we took a look at it at the end of the last episode so there's not much that we're really all that concerned about um but it's interesting to see you know a couple of ranked games nebraska penn state playing the some ranked conference opponents but other than that, this should be a relatively safe week, although this is the type of week where you could see a lot of chaos. Oklahoma, Clemson, North Carolina, the three lone unbeaten teams here in the polls. And of course, uh, Clemson and North Carolina at some point should run into each other. So uh, <laughs> this could be a very interesting season in terms of how many teams have a bunch of losses. The awards semifinalist lists have come out. So we're going to go through quickly to see if we have any players uh, of our own eligible otherwise we won't worry too much about these awards until the end of the season when they get given out so for the benderick uh we have teddy gallagher up there in 10th place at best linebacker we find teddy again uh and i got to imagine here where we don't have anything else except for best returner yeah, it should be Aaron Diggs, 739 kick return yards and a touchdown and 262 punt return yards with a touchdown. Uh, so far looking like it's blowing everybody out of the water. I don't see anybody that matches that in terms of touchdowns or really in terms of yards. So this one, if he continues that performance, should be his to lose. So not a whole lot to look at before the matchup there. Um, now we can take a look at, at at the matchup itself, and I think again that we looked at this before, but we can see it looks like it's leaning mostly in our favor. Total offense, rush offense, turnover differentials, the only things that are going uh, South Alabama's way. Uh, however, we are also on the road, and we're just going to keep it pretty simple, and I, I didn't mean to change that. We're going to just go white on black and see uh, maybe if that helps us. Again, South Alabama, I don't think anything changed for them so far. Um, we can take a look at their presets, their alternates. Uh, I think we'll stick with just the home. And then as we look here at the overalls, 77 to 75 for us. 75 to 74 leaning in our favor and 80 to 78 on defense also leaning in our favor. 
This one is one for us to lose. However, things could, you know, always get a little bit crazy and unexpected. As we load in, again, we see the stats. Um, offensively, I don't expect a whole lot from them. However, it seems they have a pretty decent defense, so we need to make sure that we're taking care of the football today. They've got a visiting player, and, you know, their best player's only low 80s. We've been seeing a lot of mid 80s. Um, maybe that gives us a little bit of an edge, and oh my goodness, a left guard out for 11 weeks, a middle linebacker out for the season, and an outside linebacker out for the season. The Jaguars have really been hit by the injury bug. So we come into Mobile looking good at the top of the conference. Tails never fails. Continues to be our motto. We will kick this one off and see how we can do here on the road. For what seems like the millionth time in a row, Biscardi has this game underway. And again, forcing the touchback, we will uh, be able to see our defense come out and hopefully start this game off well. It's not something that I typically do, starting the the game good on defense, and eh, that could have been better, giving up five yards. So they have a second and five to work with. They go to the air, and the out route, oh, was that perfect timing or what? We get the stop, force the third down. I think that was about as close as you can get to uh, having a pass interference called in this game without it actually happening. These guys are going to go play action, and we are there. Quarterback Desmond Trotter tried to trot that one out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, went for the scramble. Doesn't work. He takes the sack and defense holds three and out. I'm going to go ahead and try to keep uh, terrible puns like that to a minimum for the rest of this episode. Don't, please don't worry. Diggs muffs the punt, but ends up recovering it swiftly. Seems like a weird camera angle to me, but it's a great punt return nonetheless. And we are starting this drive inside the 35. After... <laughs> the last episode where we threw three interceptions. Uh, I really want to have a good running game. Marable only gets a yard on the first uh, play from scrimmage for the offense, though. So it's difficult to, uh, you know, get the running game going when, when we struggle like that and are forced to pass. But we have a third and four, and uh, maybe we can pick it up here. I have faith that this counter will work, and we can run three plays in a row for the first down. However, the blocking's not there. Maripol just can't quite pick it up. We're going to have to settle for a field goal. Not a crazy amount of wins, although... Oof, I always get worried that I'm going to mess one of those up. You know, I guess I did mess the drive up, though, as we only come away with three points there. With less than two minutes off the clock, we're going to go ahead and see uh, USA start their second drive. This one's immediately going backwards before they can even run a play, though. So, first and 15, we'll see if they do anything. It's a run to the edge. We're there with Gallagher. Man, this is not going well for the Jaguars yet. I somehow managed to have not terrible uh, user there as, man, Desmond Trotter won a three through the air and almost had that screen picked off. And just like that, we've got him in a third and 18. So, really, really not going well for these guys. Uh, negative yards in the game so far as they are looking deep. Can Bush get there? He has a deflower, a, a great pass breakup early. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. He has the interception, and we get the ball right back. This is not going well for them, but it's going great for us. Derek Bush was inches away from turning that into a big return off the interception, but still we get decent field position to start this one. And I'm going to continue to run at a decent amount, although maybe we take a shot here on second down. We did know coming into this game that their defense was going to be the better unit, so... Uh, I can't expect to do great things, but maybe I can hope for the best. I'm just, yeah, I got to just get rid of that one. Didn't feel like I could scramble for much and eh, maybe uh, something, I guess, would have been better than nothing. Third and long again. We didn't convert the first time out on third down. We'll hope that these guys can get it done over the middle. Brown oh, just ran into the linebacker there. So the pass falls incomplete. We are forced to punt this one away and we'll see maybe if we can... Get a decent one. Skip past the return man. And that one's going to go out of bounds inside the 15. So our punting pretty solid so far this season. But offense just not getting it done to start this game. I came out wanting to run a lot with our offense. But I think um, the way that this has gone so far, we're going to have to be doing shorter passes. 
And through the first two drives, the defense was phenomenal. But, you know, if they're if we're not able to score points on the offense, it's going to be a problem. Somehow the quarterback escaping pressure still running around. I don't know how he got back to the line of scrimmage there. That was like Johnny Manziel in the backfield there. I thought he was going to just throw one up for a touchdown. Very worried uh, on that play. Quarterback, he's scrambling again. Uh, this time we finally get him third and 15. Third sack of the game already. Still in the first quarter. So just like us, these guys are 0 for 2 on third down. My question is, can we uh, keep them from picking up the first down? Quarterback's throwing it up. Strong drops the pick. But it's another pass breakup. He's 1 of 5. Uh, through the air, Trotter is. And this one is going to turn into a defensive battle, apparently. Fourth and 15. They've got to punt this one to Diggs, which is always dangerous. Our potential returner of the year gets his hands on it, doesn't muff the ball, and gets us almost across midfield out at the 49 that time. So the running game hasn't at all worked at the start of this game. We'll go play action to start this drive and see if anybody's there. I don't see anything scrambling. Got to throw this one away. No intentional grounding, but while Trotter is 1 of 5, we're 0 of 3. And we just can't manage to find a completion, but I'm going to continue to go to the air and I don't see it. I don't see it getting rid of it, trying to find Isaiah Likely, but it's just not there. And just like that, it's 3rd and 10. I'm sure I've missed some open receivers, but Man, this is difficult. And that one, I didn't even throw it to Sam Denmark. That was supposed to go to Latushko. We got lucky that the inaccuracy went straight to our own man. First third down conversion of the day. First completion for Grayson McCall and Marable. Able to get a good chunk of that one on first down. At this point, I'm not entirely sure what we can do to uh, find success. Man, they are just so strong, it feels like, defensively. Managing to get a first down, though. We'll go ahead and on first down and run this one up the middle. Marable, again, just a decent little carry, but we're not really breaking off anything big. The biggest positive to this game so far is that our defense has been able to hold them as we find Sam Denmark again for another first down inside the red zone. Could be looking to the end zone here. Uh, and what might be the final play of the first quarter. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Looking for Latushko, and there's the first touchdown. Oh! Maybe a late hit on that one, but 18 yards. Grayson McCall, after starting, what was that? 0 of 4, 1 of 5 through the air, finds his first uh, big completion as we take a two score lead here at the end of the first. Aside from an incompletion, I'll expect this to be the final play of the quarter. 10 to nothing. They go to the air. Gunter was there. I don't know how he doesn't get the tackle. We finally do knock down Jalen Wayne, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter finally. Desmond Trotter finds his second completion. These guys have not had any success uh, on the field offensively. And I got to hope that the defense can keep it up. See what we can do in the man. Is that it's a play action? I thought it was going to be a draw. We're there with Gunter. It's not enough. Brandon Crumb's able to pick up the first down, holding onto the ball through the contact. We were so close to uh, picking that one off, I felt like, as their Trotter's going to throw another one away. Under 80 total yards of offense between both teams at this point in the game. They're going to run the slip screen. Quarterback's going to throw it away after almost getting sacked. You know it's not going well when you can't even get the throw off on a slip screen. This brings up the team's fourth third down of the game. They've been unsuccessful in the previous three. And it looks like they might be successful here. Diving catch for Jalen Tolbert. Oh, 37 yards. Finally, they find a man open. Unfortunately for us, it just brings them inside the 30 and sets them up for a massive run inside the 10 for a first and goal. So just like that, their offense catches fire and we're going to be looking to, to hold on to the lead. Maybe they make a mistake. They go to the air on this first down, throw out to the running back and he catches it and runs out of bounds without gaining anything. But the pylon is on the field over in the right corner. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'm expecting a throw to the corner of the end zone, and yeah, there it is. Jalen Wayne, the man who uh, I think made a decent catch earlier in the game, picks up that one. Now Desmond Trotter, 50% on the day, makes up for the interception potentially with a wide open man in the end zone, 7-10. So we get a chance to return one now, and Diggs 
will definitely be bringing this out. Uh, interesting blocking, Diggs. Uh, not getting much past the 25 there. So after struggling on their first three drives, they go and score in like less than a minute. And now maybe it's our time. Sam Denmark can't hold on to that deep ball on first down. Second down will look to pick up a couple yards with the run. Handoff's not going anywhere. I got met by the linebacker right at the gap. So now it's our turn to struggle. And we'll see if anything's coming. I'm throwing one up. It is so risky. It's way too far out in front of Latushko. Zero chance to get at that. That's a mistake. I wish I could have that one back. And just like that, we've got to punt it back to him. I just like, what am I doing here? Uh, we'll see if we can slip it past the guy and, and get this to be a decent looking punt again. You know, maybe maybe cheesing the, the punting a little bit. Baker fields it. Uh, I ran right past him, so, I think, you know, it was a, a decent return for him. A decent net punt for us. Defense needs to step up on this drive. Uh, expecting the run. It looks like it is a draw. Decent tackle for Carlos Davis. But a uh, decent run for Carlos Davis. They pick up five. And I got to wonder what the heck happened to the, our defense. What kind of adjustments can we make to get back to where we were? As this one's picked up by Gunter, it's going to be a pick six. Just as I'm defaming the defense, Gunter says, I got you. The second interception of this defense of the game, he takes it to the house. And we extend our lead back to 10. Well, maybe if I just talk crap about the defense, <laughs> they'll start to perform purely out of spite. Uh, this one's going to Krom, who already has a decent reception on the day, and just like that, that's a quick first down. Try to see what we can do here. They're going to throw that ball away. Uh, I don't think that was anything but just getting rid of the ball. So, second and ten now. They go to the air again. Quarterback scrambling. He's, you know, wrapped up from behind. It's, what, our fourth sack of the game? Aside from the touchdown drive... They've got almost nothing going for them in this game as that's, well, oh man, this is how the touchdown drive started last time. A big third down conversion to Jalen Wayne. I can't help but feel like every time we get burned, it's when we're in the zone. So we'll stick with the man for a little bit and see if we can do anything. Gamara Kelly, I, no, no, not Gamara Kelly. Kelly missed his tackle. Gamara's a recruit. And uh, Cade Sutherland's able to hold on to that. It's a all too quick 32 yards and they're going with the hurry up inside the 10 picking up two more second and goal now will we see another handoff it looks like it I was there with Calgary yeah we still are five white jerseys in the backfield that was going nowhere I will be pleased if we can hold these guys to a field goal I'm expecting them to go to the air uh, man comes in motion 240 left in the half and wow he just missed his man so fourth and goal we do hold him to that field goal the biggest question is are they going to be able to make it maybe we can jump the snap here oh i was offside they might get another chance at this they might decide to go for it we'll see field goal was good offside very clearly on me trying to get aggressive blocking it and they will decline so 17 to 10. We get the ball back with a chance to extend the lead. Only two and a half minutes, but all of our timeouts to work with here as Diggs again will get a good chance to return this fielding at about the three yard line. And oh, the blocking is impeccable. They're not going to catch him. Diggs is gone. The 20, the 10. Oh, he's running out of steam, but it's not going to matter. Aaron Diggs and our special teams, like we said, returner of the year material, <laughs> just like that. It's going to be a 14-point lead, 24 to 10. Uh, I guess our timeouts didn't matter because we didn't see the offense on the field this time. Aaron Diggs is just straight up a cheat code. Like, it's just kind of absurd how well he does. They're running a screen. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, that's not great. He's still on his feet but gets run out of bounds. Carlos Davis, another big play for him. These guys are going to be pushing now with about two minutes left in the half to see if they can... Get this one a little bit more even. Desmond throwing another away. It's going to be a, a test to see if the defense is able to step up once again. The slant, I honestly should have just left my assignment to help cover that. That was too easy. They, When they move the ball, they, they move it well. And that's another good one. Thankfully for us, not a first down. So the clock will 
Well, it'll stop because they take their first time out. And the way that I see this going right now uh, is that if we get the stop, or if it looks like we're going to get the stop, we'll be taking our timeouts. Um, or if we could just make sure that the clock burns out before they score, that's fine too. We don't have any true indication of how good this uh, kicker is on the team. He isn't able to get his kickoffs into the end zone. We know that. But I got to imagine now they're in field goal range. We'll get risky on this second down and bring the blitz. The pressure's there and we're able to oh, get him in the backfield. This guy is slippery back there. Potentially that sack would maybe knock them out of field goal range as quarterback scrambling again and he's broken a tackle. Can we maybe strip the ball? <laughs> Still on his feet. That's disappointing. A minute to go. They're keeping their timeouts as well. That's, that's not what you want to see. USA go into the air. Man open, but if we can tackle them inbounds, that's great. Yeah, they're forced to take their second timeout. And now here, second and three. Only one timeout left. We know that the clock will be burning. And that's a great stop. Hitting him in the backfield. It's third and four. I'm actually going to take a timeout. A little bit risky. But it could work out really, really well in our favor if we can hold them on this third down. I don't feel great about it. Uh, they hand it off. We're there with Gallagher. And for once, my user doesn't fail me. We can take our second timeout. It's fourth and six, and we're going to see a field goal. We'll have plenty of time. Uh, and you never know. Maybe Diggs is able to take one to the house again. As this kick is good. Just barely inside the uprights. I'm sure that they are not looking forward to this. Kicking it off to Diggs, who just took one to the house. And he's fielding this one at the six-yard line. So this kicker isn't doing great and digs off to the races again you gotta be kidding me one man to be inside the 20 the 10 cuts it inside and he's into the end zone back to back kickoff return touchdowns that one goes 94 yards and we extend the lead once again we're gonna give the ball back to him though so defense better be ready they have been on the field for such a long time it feels like it is absolutely insane what Diggs seems to be capable of as uh they're looking like they want to go for this, and they I think they need to. At this stage, South Alabama has struggled to score points. We've extended our lead the past two times we have the we've had the ball, even with them scoring some points. And with us getting the ball in the third quarter, they need these points desperately. Only one timeout. They have to go into a hurry up here. They don't want to spend that in case they can take the uh, field goal. And you know what? Fourth and three. I'm taking a timeout. 14 seconds left. You never know. Diggs could return a punt here. I see no reason not to force them to punt this ball away. Uh, you never know. Could it be three special teams touchdowns in a row? Diggs. Oh, it's looking awfully good. Diggs has the corner. The kicker's blocked. Diggs inside the 20, the 10. It's actually insane. A kickoff return for a touchdown. And then another one. And now a punt return. Special teams is dead dominating in this game and that's the end of the half as we'll kick our extra point and take a massive lead here into the locker room getting the ball as well this is just absurd i i honestly kind of feel bad for him because they're gonna have to kick off to him to start the half and he's gonna get a little bit of rest here in the locker rooms as well this this is a nightmare for south alabama just so that you guys believe us we haven't even touched the sliders this is this is what we've been on it's not like i did something crazy and cheated to make it easy it truly just has been that insane of a performance from Diggs as he's going to be able to field another one at the six yard line his last kick return was 94 yards to the house is this one gonna go as well you've got to be freaking kidding me he's in a foot race the 20 the 10 Diggs does it again Four returns in a row taken to the house. Three on kickoffs and one from the punt team. This has got to be some sort of record. Our offense has only run something like 17 plays. Certainly, I think it's less than 20. And we have 45 points. Oh, Kelly, if he would have picked that one off, man, this game would be done. Second and 10 now. I honestly, I don't know what to think. Oh, man, I thought I had a chance to pick that one off. We do have a third and inches. Need to step up your defense. 
I don't know if it's a smart play, but we're bringing the house. They go with the option. We're going to hit the quarterback behind the line. He doesn't get the pitch off, and it's fourth and three. And guess what? Diggs is going to go back to return a punt. The magic cannot continue, right? If Diggs somehow manages to take this one to the house, I'm going to lose my freaking mind. I don't understand what's been happening in this game. It doesn't look like it's that great of an opportunity to return. And no, he only takes it 21 yards across the 50. <laughs> I legitimately have never seen anything like that in, in my entire time playing this game. It has been years. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. It honestly has been so long since our offense has had a tr like a, an attempt out on the field. I don't know what to do, and <laughs> I just I'm kind of panicking. Grayson McCall's having a terrible game. Honestly, I think that if it wasn't for special teams and in, in the pick six that we got, there's a chance that we're losing this game. Fourth and two first. We're gonna go for this. I'm looking for the dagger here on this drive. It would truly be almost game ending, although we're getting chased down. McCall could scramble for this, or I could take a risk and throw it up. Brown! <laughs> it's a pick. I'm stupid. I. <laughs> this is such a classic goon move right there. Just take the, uh, take the first down on the ground. What am I doing? There was absolutely zero reason to throw that pass. I, I can't explain my reasoning. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Jalen Wayne, seven yards there. We'll see. Maybe we can stop these guys. Out route was open. They go over the middle, though. That little crossing route finding Jalen Tolbert. And he gets 10 more in a first down. These guys have managed to do a pretty solid job. Uh, now on offense, picking up the yards. Quarterback scrambling. Man, I really wish that he would fumble one of these. But it's a sack for a loss of six anyways. Second and 16 now. They go to the air. This one could be picked off. Kelly holds on to it. Brings it in. What is that? Our third pick of the game. We get the ball back. Bailing me out from my terrible interception that I threw. And that was a beautiful one. Me being the big doofus that I am, though, we're going to immediately take a shot on this first down and see if anything can go well for us. There could be Sam Denmark. Oh, can't hold on to it through the contact. I thought maybe he could get it on the second attempt, but incomplete. And in the most embarrassing of fashions, we are 3 of 12 passing on the game. We, we have four special teams touchdowns and three completions. This is legitimately one of the weirdest performances I have ever seen in this game. McCall able to pick up the first down with his legs this time. I, 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 honest, I don't know what's going on. I really want to, uh, to be able to throw some nice like passes, but I'm just unable to right now. Brown breaking a tackle, bouncing off a guy, picking up six yards. That's a good one for him. Second and four. You better believe we're going to the air here. Oh, no. What am I doing? Mm, bad throw right as Javon started to move, and it's third and four. I'm not really sure why I'm not running the ball here, because it has not worked for me to go to the air, and I just... <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is legitimately one of the worst offensive performances I've ever had in this game. I've been playing it for years. We've been doing it for hundreds of hours on Twitch and a, and a large chunk more here on YouTube. And I honestly don't think that we've ever played this bad on offense. The defense is great. And I do have to give credit where credit's due to the South Alabama defense. We knew coming in that they were ranked pretty highly. They're, they're proven to be a handful. And on third and inches, we're going to blitz here. They do hand it off up the middle. We got to him. Just he's able to fall forward for three there for how long our defense has been out on the field. I think it's honestly a miracle that we've only given up 13 points. Meanwhile, their quarterback is now 20 of 33. Um, he's going to scramble here and slide down to avoid getting popped. Second and six. Under a minute to go in the third. Uh, honestly, uh, I really do think that we would lose this game. Our defense has played really well, but uh, with an offense that can't score, if we didn't have special teams, this might be a blowout in the other team's favor alongside all that i'm just not even sure uh what what we can do to get the stop now although defense holds again and i think they're four of 12 on third downs 
So neither team able to do much, and I think that we're about to come to the end of the third quarter. Will they get the playoff? No. So into the fourth quarter we go. We're forcing a punt here. I don't think it's going to be returnable, although I'm going to make every attempt to do it. You better believe it. Uh, anything to not have the ball in our offense's hands in this game uh, seems like a good idea to me. Um, kind of a blowout. Let's see if we can close it out. The fourth quarter has arrived, and apparently so has their sense of urgency as they've decided to go for it on fourth and one from inside the 40 or inside the 50. I was going to say 45, and we brought the house expecting a uh, run. They go to the air and they pick up 22 yards. Such a bizarre game. I got to wonder at what point is our defense going to get too tired to keep up this, uh, you know, dominance that they've showed so far. I would be perfectly fine keeping this team held to uh, another field goal as that looks like it could be a touchdown. No, Jalen Tolbert can't quite stay in bounds. Maybe should have reached for the pylon there as they're going to review that. That's That came up awfully quickly. Let's see. I think he was in. You can't really see that first foot. I mean, that's good on Sundays. Come on, refs. What are you looking at that one for? Yeah, that doesn't just stand. That one's confirmed. Of course, the first goal inside the five. All right, we're going to try to get a little bit crazy with it, bringing the massive blitz again. We call it a run. And the pressure, thankfully, rushing eight man gets there. Loss of one, second and goal. We're going to bring a little bit of a blitz here on second and goal. This one's a handoff. Big gap up the middle, but the massive tackle. Maybe could be a horse caller these days. Only goes for a yard, and it's third down now. I just don't feel like they'd put it on the ground again, but they will. And he's, oh no, he's, he got in. I thought for sure he was short. I got to see this one again. Did he just happen? Yeah, I think he fell forward at the end there. And so it's going to be another touchdown for South Alabama. 20 to 45. We need to make sure that we win this game. It may be four scores in our favor, but you know. Crazy things have happened in this game. Latushko, thankfully, recovering the first onside kick attempt. And our offense will get a chance to come out on the field. And I think, honestly, we're just running the ball, burning the clock, not trying to turn it over. With how terrible the offense has been in this game, I see zero reason to try to get aggressive. Just let the running game try to do its work, and we'll see how much we can burn off the clock. Marable here on this second and five is going to get a carry. There's a gap, and see, here we go. Fourth quarter starting to work for us. Ten yards there. And the more first downs that we can get here, the better it's going to be. We don't need it every play. As <laughs> Wow. Merrill Bell pinballing his way forward for six on that one. And South Alabama needs to stop in a hurry if they have any sort of outside shot. That's uh, making this one a win for themselves. You know, we are under three minutes to go now. It could be, you know, that they are kind of waving the white flag a little bit on this one. However, I doubt that as we tick now below two minutes to play after uh, the clock runs out. So looking good. Great first down there. So the most success that we've seen on a drive is late here where we are just handing the ball off consistently. Um, maybe should have been doing this the whole game. Seems like they really have waved the white flag. Thankfully not taking timeouts. There is a third down, but with just over a minute to play, I don't think that they really have any sort of chance to do it now. We aren't going to get the chance to take a knee. However, this will be the final play of the game. I guess we technically could take a knee here, but I want to make sure that they don't take some sort of timeout and see McCall pick up the first down and just secure it the easy way. We got a little bit of extra XP for that as well. And as the clock starts to tick down, you know, we are going to cheese this a little bit. We don't need to run a play, but if we take the knee while ahead in the last minute of the fourth quarter, we get a little bit extra, extra XP. If we can do that every game possible, it's worth it. And this one comes to a close. We win it 45 to 21 at the end of the day, or 20. Sorry, I guess they had extra field goals. And how about Aaron Diggs? 308 kick return yards, three kick return touchdowns, and a punt return touchdown. Literally the most insane stat line I have ever seen uh, to go alongside that three interceptions for the defense, plenty of sacks, and a miserable game from the offense. In a game that we won 45-20, to 20, the offense scored almost nothing.
in a game where we scored 45 points, I would have never believed you if you told me that the offense got, what, 10 of it? I think they the offense had, what, a touchdown and a field goal? 28 second quarter points for us. <laughs> and the offense didn't do a lick of it. Uh, Absolutely insane. We were held to 89 rushing yards and 36 passing. We had three completions on the game. We end up winning still with time of possession. We win the turnover battle. <laughs> At the end of the day, we just embarrass them on the road. And that has got to be a uh, sports center worthy performance. Aaron Diggs. The man's so good at returning the ball that the game doesn't even bother showing his stats. All it has to say is, yeah, he's player of the game. You know why. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Gunter, six tackles, a sack, and a pick. And not just a pick, it was a pick six, right? So just, just dominant, a crazy match. And I am so happy you guys got to witness that insanity. So we win our seventh straight. We move to seven and one. And we can advance the week. We've got Louisiana Monroe. I'm curious. We're back on the road. I'm really curious to see uh, how the recruits felt about that game and, and what Herb Street's thinking into our next matchup. Well, it seems that it was a decent week for recruiting. We pick up the 68 overall left end, David Wilson, and the 62 overall left tackle, Harry Robertson. So good news for our lines. However, Eric Oliver, the right guard, it goes to Wake Forest, which is a big bummer. That would have been a massive pickup for us. And Gerald Meyer, 55 overall free safety. Honestly, not too bummed about missing out, out on him. Florida Atlantic will pick up the free safety there. And still no ranking for us as this next game. Oh, I hope it's an easy one. One in seven ULM. Herb Street's going for us. They are a D plus team. Oh yeah, I hate to see it. Offensively, they do rank better than us, but we haven't necessarily been good there to begin with. There was a little bit of chaos around the country. Nothing shaken up in the top 10, however. Number 11, Nebraska. Number 12, Penn State. Uh, number 14, Miami. Uh, previous number 20, Western Kentucky. And previous number 24, Indiana. All take losses. Still not even receiving votes. The disrespect is too real. What do, what do we got to do? Maybe have a better offense? <laughs> if we could have paired a good offense with the rest of that game, uh, this would be unbelievable. Travis Etienne stays at the top of the Heisman board as Sam Ellinger moves up. Uh, Kellen Mond drops a little bit. Sam Howell stays there. You know, North Carolina having a pretty good season. They just uh, demolished Virginia 42-16, and Najee Harris jumping up into that fifth spot. You know, names that you kind of expect to see for the most part. But I say Aaron Diggs for Heisman. <laughs> I am still scratching my head at how that happened. Four special teams touchdowns in a row. I think probably with that, uh, you know, defensive pick six mixed in between all that. So just a flurry, like 35 ridiculous points for us in the game. And uh, I guess that's going to be it for the episode. I don't know if we can ever follow this one up in terms of pure craziness. Maybe maybe I can work on my offense, though, and uh, we won't need to rely on our special teams and defense quite as much. That's going to do it for this episode, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means a ton. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about not just uh, our new mic quality and, and what you, you think about it. Is it better? Is it worse? But also how you guys feel about the special team's performance and if you've ever seen anything like that. Also, if you just enjoy the content in general, please feel free to subscribe. It means a lot and it helps me out a ton. And of course, if you want to see some more content over on another platform, feel free to head over to twitch.tv slash goonmaster where we're live playing sports games uh, pretty frequently. We'd love to have you over there as well. But regardless, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.